Welcome back. Nothing is better than food that can take you back to a certain time and place. I especially love dishes that connect you to a really happy childhood memory, right, Jesse? I totally agree. Our first guest is taking us on a culinary journey inspired by memories from her home in the Middle East. Here with expertise on mastering the art of cooking maza for the holiday season is the author of Modern Flavors of Arabia, Suzanne Husseini. Hello, welcome. Hi. Hello. Hi, ladies. What exactly is maza and why are they so great for entertaining? Well, maza actually is a Persian word that means to savor. So we put out a whole bunch of different kinds of plates, whether they're sweet, salty, tart, hot, cold, raw, whatever, and we nibble and eat and enjoy and feast. It's a feast for the eyes, basically like a smorgasbord. I love yes. That's what it is. And there seems to be a lot of variety in the different kinds of foods that yes. you offer at the Maza table. So why don't yes. we begin, let's dive in. Okay. And we're gonna start with labne balls. Am I yes. pronouncing it correctly? Labne, yes. Labne balls, yes. and so they are also herb and nut crusted. Correct. So tell us what these are. Well, labne is derived from the word leban, which means yogurt in Arabic. So this started as yogurt, I took away all the water by putting it in a cheesecloth so that it becomes almost cheese-like. And you rolling it into this, go ahead and, and, and go ahead and do it. I'm gonna make you work. Oh yeah, make me work uh, for my it, dinner. There's uh, uh, it, olive oil here? It's in olive oil, it stays preserved. That's how we would preserve it and it would keep for months that way. Oh, and um, wow. there's uh, spices, cumin, there's pistachios, hazelnuts, sesame seeds, a little bit of thyme, and even some rose petals are in oh, there as well. Oh, that's Ooh. lovely. Yes, and that'll go right ahead with your uh, cheese platter for the holidays I, for Maza. <laughs> Can I eat it just like this? Go for it. Mm -hmm. Or on a crostini, but you don't want to do mm. crostini. Mm. <laughs> mm. Beautiful Good. flavors. Mm. So as Mel yeah. samples that, um, Suzanne, the labne looks right at home yes. on this cheese platter, yes. but what other cheeses would accompany the labne? on maybe a traditional North American holiday platter. Absolutely, I love my cheese platters to have lots of variety as well. So I like a nice sharp cheddar, for instance. Mm -hmm. I like a beautiful creamy brie, a little uh, gorgonzola cheese, and then your lebni balls that are encrusted are just a nice compliment. It gives that little tart, mm -hmm. it's creamy. It's not goat cheese for a lot of people that don't like it, but this seems to tick every box for people who like something uh -huh. different. It's does like it a, a little, goat cheese. Does it have like. a little tang? A little, a little tang, Because it's yogurt. Yeah. 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 Um, lots of people are familiar with baba ganoush as yes. a dip, um, but you've done uh, baba ganoush here with a bit of a twist. Tell us about this salad that you've created. Well, this salad is actually baba ganoush. This is what baba ganoush really is, even though people refer to the one with tahini, which is called mutabbal. But nevertheless, it is still charcoal-grilled <laughs> eggplants. Uh, there's herbs, parsley, mint, uh, onions, tomatoes, uh, a vinaigrette of lemon juice and garlic. And then I will ask you to finish it off by adding some pomegranates, of course, and do it with love, please, okay. because that's, <laughs> that's how it tastes so good. Yes, some walnuts as well, toasted, and then, <laughs> and then some pomegranate molasses, which is in that Ooh, cup, okay. which is just cooked down juice of pomegranates. Just drizzle on a little bit, and then finish it off Ooh, with it olive oil. <gasps> that's it. Oh, yes. oh that's, that's it. Nice. And some olive oil, and I have it uh, served as a, uh, as a flower, so at your cocktail party, you pull out a petal that has just enough for a bite, and you have your drink, and you enjoy, and you can serve it as a salad or as a nibble. This is so Ooh, beautiful. Wow. Well, I mean, what is the inspiration behind using nuts and pomegranates as the garnish? Well, we in the Arab world love to eat everything with nuts. Oh, nuts is sort of a, a component that's very important. It adds a nice buttery crunch to dishes. It mm. adds a little sweetness. And it also says to your guests that we love you very much because it's, an, it's, an, it's, a, it's a luxury item. So the more nuts, the more we love you. Mm. Mm. It is so beautiful. Oh my God, that looks gorgeous. <laughs> uh, yeah. These tarts look gorgeous. Yes. And these are traditional uh, Palestinian dishes. Absolutely. Is this is a Palestinian home dish that would be on big flatbread, but I've thrown away the flatbread and I've done a short crust pastry. Uh, stayed true to the integrity of the dish by keeping the caramelized onions the way they would be made. They would be cooked till they're sweet. Yeah. We add sumac to balance the sweetness with a little tartness. And then um, uh, place it, you can serve this with a salad at any lunch or do mini versions as I've done here. Oh, I love the mini versions. So if you could just sprinkle a little bit of pine nuts on top, because again, nuts, you know, you have to finish it off with buttery pine nuts. And so and this is what you'd garnish them yes. with, some more pomegranates. They look like little jewels or ornaments oh, yes. of these little tarts. I yes, just think they're so exactly. Beautiful. They're the only jewels I can afford anyway. Yeah. <laughs> 
There's a lot of uh, pine nuts in Arabic cooking. What yes. is that? Uh, well, it's, it's again, it's native to mm. our part of the world, mm -hmm. and it is something that is a luxury item. It gives a dish, it elevates it. Not only do we put it in things like this, but also rice dishes, okay. mm -hmm. on meat dishes. Mm -hmm. It is sort of the finishing buttery touch. Sweet and savory, by the way. Mm. We do it both ways. Mm. Yeah. Okay, let's focus yeah. on sweet yes. for just a second, because we can't forget something sweet. What do you have yes. for me, Suzanne? Well, I have the quintessential, also Palestinian dish that comes from Nablus specifically, and it's basically a pastry, the, the, the thin shreds yes. of phyllo dough. <gasps> they have been just immersed in butter tons of butter, <laughs> and there's a cheese layer in there. Actually, it's nabulsi cheese, which is a sheep's milk cheese that's slightly salty. There's no sugar in there, but I'm gonna ask you to pour on a little bit of what rose is syrup. Rose this syrup. Is rose syrup? This yes. is why we have oh the color, look at the yes. color of it. So you drizzle on top. This is what's gonna make it all come together, okay? okay? Put is on that a little enough? more. No, you need a little more. A I little know you more? like your sweet. I do. Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay, is enough. That good? Okay. And that is Take hot, that piping Thank hot, you. coming out of the oven, by the way. And then sprinkle oh. a little bit of pistachio nuts. Love pistachio. Oh. Yes. Gosh. And this is like the this is a dessert like no other. This is the celebratory dessert of the Arab world. So when we're celebrating, oh. whether it's after the holidays or during the holidays, during a meza, mm -hmm. or somebody's just had a baby, somebody's had a wedding, this is what we celebrate with. It was mm. my father's favorite oh, dessert. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> this smells this is so good. Yeah, this is insane. rose mm. syrup. Beautiful, beautiful simple syrup. syrup. I want to add it to every. I want to drink it, but I won't. <laughs> hey, are oh. sweets typically mm. uh, always included in a traditional maza feast? Absolutely. Uh, because, yes, yes, because this is all about indulgence. I right. mean, you're, you're eating, you're leisurely eating things and enjoying drink and so on. You finish off on a sweet note. And uh, I believe, as, and, I, and I'm sure you agree with me, I cook with no borders. So all kinds of food belong on the table, especially in Maza. It's the way you make friends and you forge friendships. Oh. That to me is everything. And if we want to keep following tradition, it is only right we understand to finish yes. all of this off with a little anise flavored aperitif. So, yes. ladies. Oh, okay. and, and this is arak, which is a traditional one that would be served oh. during Maza. Oh. And what we say in Arabic is before you say cheers, you say saha. Saha! 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 Wow. Thank you. Suzanne, thank you so much. Wow. Well, that's lovely. It's wow. A, it's a good Monday. Woo. Um, <laughs> all of the recipes that we've been talking about today will be on the social uh, .ca after the show. And studio audience, get ready to prepare your own holiday meza because you're all going home with a copy of Modern Flavors of <laughs> Arabia.